and I can't tell you how humbled I am to be even allowed to participate with this group. Um, you know, I, I had met with Christian and Mark going back several years ago, and we talked about financial literacy and the importance of educating our youth about finances. And I've, my whole career has been in the credit business. Uh, and they said, hey, there's this group of people we'd like to introduce you to Dennis and Denise. I'm like, OK, not knowing what I was getting into. Um, you know, and then when you meet Dennis and now I see how you all you know, then you, you fall into the Dennis spell. And it's like, my God, I'll drop everything. I'll do anything. Same goes for Denise. So between the two of them, you know, I started having conversations about how can we, you know, potentially help through this awesome organization through OSG, you know, teach our kids about money, about finances and set them up for success. Right. Because it starts at a young age. And then as I've sat in on these meetups, I, I mean, I just can't tell you what it's done for me personally. I mean, you were the most passionate group of educators, principals, just people. And it's, you know, when I come into this every week, it's like I get power from you. So I, I'm here to participate, help, hoping that we can bring, you know, some level of financial support to these youths, to their parents, to the educators. And I, I'm all in, man. I'm family now. Again, OSG is always celebrating the accomplishments. And so now we're looking at one of the newer principles of OSG, our girl, our sis, our good friend, <laughs> Jenny's McLean. McLean, what's up, man? Yeah, Talk to the people. congratulations, up. Principal McLean. Ma matter of fact, you know, you, what? But, but you know what? Here's, but here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part of Linus. She was only at AP for one year. <laughs> and they one saw day, one day. It seemed like one day. She literally. <laughs> okay, next. They thought about, Listen. I mean, they they could have they could have thought of a thousand other people with more credentials, more years, but they went and sought after her. So that's that is big. I just wanted to shout you out, sis. Let us know how this feels, what is when going on with you. You are operating in God's gift, the doors will be busted open for you when all you have to do is just be. That's why, that's how I see it with Principal McLean. Come through, Principal listen, McLean. Man. How are you? Listen, listen, hello, fam. Listen, I am excited. I am still kind of in that Cali zone. You know, I stayed a whole month in California visiting my daughter after getting the news because I was like, yeah, it's time to get a little bit of rest because we about to do some serious work. We about to really disrupt this system and, you know, get in there for our babies. Um, but it, it's been an amazing experience. I am truly honored. Um, you know, I, I couldn't have asked for better mentors, you know, Dennis, uh, Rochelle, Hines, you know, Principal Addo. Like I could not have asked for a better team of individuals to help me through this process and just being part of the OSG family and listening in on some of the great things that we were just doing as a people to elevate our children to the next level. You know, we're talking about finances here. We're talking about social justice. We're talking about innovation. Like you, you can't sit back, but just sit in awe of the amazement of who we are as people and where we're going. Like our kids are extremely blessed. I am excited. I am humbled. I am manifesting great things. I am a believer of manifestation and God's work and speaking it out and make sure that it happens. So I'm here for it. I'm here to learn. And yes, I was an AP for just a minute and I became an AP right into a pandemic. So I think, you know, if, 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 if you don't know what else to do or you haven't learned anything during a <laughs> pandemic, then I don't know what else, you know, you can say. But I, I was I was humbled. I was shocked because, like Dennis said, I, I'm brand new still. And my deputy superintendent kept saying, you're not new. I've been watching you since you were a teacher. Like, you're not new. You're good. You know, I've been in the Ooh, system. This is going on my that, right? 21st year. Mm. I heard I've been my watching 21st you. year. Mm, mm. Yeah. So 21 wow. years later, I am, you know, Principal McLean and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited and I feel the love. You were back in your school, you know, I think it was March and April anyway. You were still yes. pretty much at your school. So how are you handling this now? Like, you know, you're going back into the building as, as most of us talk 
And I think we heard Dane mention it the other day in April about us being like superheroes. And, you know, I think we put on our capes every day and we go into our buildings knowing what, what we're about to walk into. And so the question of, well, how are you handling that as a principal walking into um, your school knowing that the numbers are, are rising at record numbers in, um, in, in Georgia? It's definitely a balancing act because on one hand, you want to um, assure your staff, right? Um, but I, what I've learned is that um, I still have to put my oxygen mask on first um, because I think there's a misconception that as leaders, we don't go through things. You know, we don't have our own personal things going on. And so when you walk in the building, you have to be that leader for everyone that's in front of you. Um, and so, but I'm really fortunate and blessed to have people around me who keep me grounded and hold me accountable for my balance. Um, something as simple as going to the, when I came to see you guys, I had, my arm was like, it was, it still is, you know, it was hurting. And so I was like, you know what, I need to go ahead and make doctor's appointments and things of that nature. So if you haven't done that, women, if you haven't done that, men too, make your doctor's appointments. Um, because if you fall out, they'll have somebody in your place right when you, when you fall out. Um, but you have to take care of yourself because it will start showing your staff, whether you think it or not, you think you're hiding it. They know when you haven't taken care of yourself. Um, and then, you know, my closest people like my assistant principal and my counselor and my secretary, they hold me accountable, you know, and they make sure and we hold each other accountable. And that's the best part. You know, I got a chance the other day to, um, to watch the video from Ernie Elijah and Rashad and, and uh, Sticks and just to see. Um, that they recognize not only your work that you're doing, but the OSG principles and OSG and myself and stuff like that was was monumental, you know, because we know right now they probably got one of the hottest podcasts in the world. Right. And they right. were sitting there, you know, talking about us, you know what I mean? And that's big. So I wanted to know from you, what was that like, man, to be able to hear your name mentioned with Sticks and, and Rashad and Earn Your right. Leisure and, and along with your family, OSG? So shout outs, Principal Ra. Um, he's part of OSG. Shout out to OSG. Shout out to OSG. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to Dennis. Um, yeah. Dennis, big man, big big shot, Dennis. Um, Principal Ra, he's a call it revolutionary educator, right? He does things that no principal. I ain't gonna say no principal because everybody in OSG is revolutionary. But as far as LA County, I've never seen nobody approach education like him. Absolutely. You know, a uh, big shout outs to Earn Your Leisure, big shout outs to my boy Sticks. And to be mentioned on the podcast, to have us all mention on that podcast, man, that's the, for me, that's the number one podcast when it comes to financial literacy, especially for the culture right now. And uh, Troy, you know, Troy was a teacher. He was an educator, you know, and, yeah. and Rashid, he was a financial advisor trying to bring financial literacy into our school. So when it comes to like bringing awareness and financial literacy for our young people, I think it would just show the movement of how all school grounds and OSG has started and how it's elevated to be talked about and discussed on a platform that big. So I think it's just, we just keep going, man. We continue to elevate and our, our young people, our schools and our communities is going to profit off of it. Dennis has been working so hard and he is never still. And I don't, I know that he is super humble, but I don't know if everyone knows on OSG, Dennis is being awarded this weekend with the third annual New York Hustle Awards. So um, it is going to be a huge award ceremony held in Brooklyn. Um, I don't know, Ro, if you could put the link in the chat, but we should unmute our mics and show D some love because he absolutely did it. Yay! 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 Right. And, yeah. you know, he is a father, a husband, a mentor to so much of us, the, the leader of this OSG coalition. He's in school, about to be Dr. McKeezy. He is doing a million and things, and he just never says no. Um, and no wonder why he is being awarded the Hustle Award. And I know there are more accolades and awards to come. So D. Um, I'm so proud of you, and I know the whole team, on behalf of the whole OSG team, we are so proud of you. You know, as a guy who's been in entertainment business for a long time, shout out to Dame, he knows, he understands. All this stuff is really to build your confidence so that you can go out there and change the lives of the children first. And as long as we continue to keep our mandate 
and actually change the lives of these children first. That's what it's about. Then there's no time wasted on any of this. It's all about the children first. That means getting all your numbers up. That means getting all of your children, getting your attendance up, getting making the school the place that the children want to go in your neighborhood. It's all about building your confidence so that so that the children can see it through you. And as long as that's what I'm in it for, because if because as a kid coming from Brownsville, Brooklyn, without you, I was able to get through life by the by the skin of my teeth. And to see that now that you are here, it's all about actualizing your accomplishments so that the children can actually be better and our community can be better. And if we stay to our mandate, and we focus on children first and make them the reason why we're doing this, I guarantee you that this will be something that changes the world, not just for our community, but for the entire world. And that's why, you know, as much as I love my brother Dennis, as much as I love my sister Denise and the whole OSU family, I'm 100% in it for the children. And I believe that what we can do for these kids is gonna be amazing. And that's why I'm here. Salute to y'all. What has it been like for you to open school again? You know, is it what you expected? You know, what's the preparation been like? Have you guys had any um, recent cases um, in your school? So, you know, talk to us a little bit because I think we all can learn from it. You know, so you're somewhat the, you're the, you're the, you're the, the originator of it now. So tell us what we got to do. Um, well, first of all, thank you. You know, we started off, uh, well, first of all, the planning never stopped, right? You know, we've been planning still, you know, during the summertime. And although I got to kick it with you guys, there was still a lot of planning that had to be done. And what we spent most of our time on was logistics. Um, because in our district, we were 100% virtual until March after spring break. And then they only had elementary students come back in the building. So middle and high school still remained virtual. Um, and then the teachers um, came back in the building, but only elementary students came back. And it was a, a option for parents to choose virtual or to remain or to come face to face. The good thing for us in elementary, we, it was like a trial run for us. It was a dry run. So we kind of knew what to expect coming into the building except that we didn't have all students. We were on an A-B schedule. And so when we came back this year, we knew that we had to account for all students returning in the building. And although we have virtual learning academy, um, where some schools had a, a huge amount of students who remained home, we only had about mm, 11 or so that opted to stay virtual, we remained virtual and everyone else was coming back in the building. So we spent a lot of our time, one on logistics and safety. You know, obviously that's first and foremost. And then also communicating to parents what the reopening plan was, because that's what parents want to know. You know, we're coming back in the building. What is it that we have to prepare? What are we preparing for? So a lot of work went into communicating. So things such as updating our website, um, making sure that we put things on our social media, um, our class dojo, starting preparing our, our parents for what reopening looked like. And then even with the teachers. So my summer letter what I, which I typically do every summer when I welcome back the staff a couple of weeks before they come back. It, you know, set out what the vision was and what the expectations would be in terms of reopening. Because at the same time, you want to make sure that you reassure your staff that it's safe to return in the building as well. Um, when we got back in the building, one of the things, in addition to being safe that we, I really communicated or our team is what was continue to leverage that social emotional learning practices that we gained during the virtual learning um, last year, as well as keeping the eye and focus on instruction, because it can be, you can get um, caught up in, like you said, Dennis, the quote unquote learning loss, which really there's no evidence right now to support that, that there was learning loss because of the pandemic. The truth is, is our students were, we had students struggling prior to the pandemic. Um, one of our main things that we wanted to do was make sure that we learned from being away during COVID, right? Like we didn't want to just jump right in. We wanted to take and leverage a lot of the things that work for us during um, the pandemic. So, you know, they say that either the pandemic even revealed the best in people or exposed some of the things that we, that you were struggling with. I think as a school, we, we were able to see both. So um, when we went into the pandemic, we had three key pillars of our success and it was around protect the learning um, preserve community and promote connectedness. 
So um, those three pillars were the things that we based all of our decisions and how we um, planned instruction during the pandemic. And we decided to make transfer those same three pillars to moving it into the regular school year. So we spent a lot of time strategizing and doing a lot of um, gap analysis work. And we decided that there was three key things that we wanted to make sure that we brought in with protecting the learning is how to leverage technology. So when people talk about learning loss, I'm like, nah, our kids didn't lose anything. They gained a whole new skill set, And so did our teachers. So we also thought about the fact that we don't know when we may have to just stop, drop and roll and go fully virtual again. So our commitment was to make sure that all of our kids were one-on-one -on -one laptops and all of our curricula and all of our support material was technology-based. So if any day that we had to close, that we could just go and we could pick up instruction right away. And um, so we committed our ESSA funding to making sure that every single one of our kids had not only a laptop, but also a high powered laptop because we also are a STEM school. So we didn't wanna stop and drop and come from a deficit model, model and say, oh, we gotta restore. And I, I would think is that we gotta get back on track and still head towards greatness and excellence. For serving the community, we talk about making sure that we accelerate learning, right? So we're not talking about remediation like, uh, like Captain Kirk said, Principal Captain Kirk said, we are all about accelerating the learning because our data tells us right now that our kids didn't really lose much, but they're not, lear they're not learning and growing at the rate that they were before. So for us, it's about accelerating the learning and putting those key pieces in place to make sure that we um, accelerate the learning. So we took the first six weeks, we call it Smart Start. Um, it's a combination of building school, getting kids back connected to the school and getting them excited. It's also around collecting uh, quantitative and qualitative data on our kids, also from our teachers and taking time to really get to know our kids in a better way and get to know our parents in a better way. So we we created some goals around what the six weeks look like. And the, the first six weeks is all about getting people connected and building the instructional um, data sets so that we can make smart choices about small groups of kids. And um, it's just been super, super duper exciting. Uh, we have a lot going on. We're going to do it. We're testing out or something else that we also learned is that a lot of our parents work at night and um, or our, a lot of our parents don't have access to be able to support their kids around curriculum. We learned that. So we created a night school, a virtual night school program that will be from uh, five to seven. And it's like office hours because during the pandemic to promote connectedness, we every single one of our teachers, every one of our leadership team members held office hours almost every day for our families and for our teachers. And that was a big success. We got a lot of parents, parents reconnected to school and um, they learned a lot about how their kids are learning. So we created a, um, a night school program where parents and kids can drop in and learn how to do homework and support their kids and learn what their kids are learning. So we, uh, we are taking a multifaceted approach, but we're not, um, we're not sacrificing the learning we decided to create 90 minute humanities blocks on, in elementary so that our kids have more access to um, small group instruction and individual instruction. We also are partnering with a tutoring company to do what's called high dosage tutoring. So our kids that are falling far below where just regular standard instruction isn't working, they have multiple ways that they get an additional support and additional help.